continuing the coverage of the Carly Gregg's murder trial. She killed her mother. And in the last video was the the prosecution put on the stepfather. And I let it play. It's like an hour long, but I, I just, I was going to just clip it, but I was like, man, I just got intrigued and wanted, wanted to watch more. Now, this is the defense on, re, on cross-examination. They, they're coming up. It's their turn to talk to him. And I am curious of what are they going to ask him. Now, of course, the defense in opening arguments had stated that the father is still supporting her. And and then in the last video where the prosecution's in direct, she, he's been in contact with her. It, it got a little weird. I, I'm going to admit, it, it seemed a little odd. Um, from how he was talking, he's very mild-mannered man, gentleman. Um, it just, and then him talking to her, and then she asked him, a, like, like he said he didn't even, they weren't even discussing, they never discussed the case. I mean, how, oh my God. I, I can't, guys, I can't even imagine how, what, when, and where. He's talking to her. And why would he not want to ask her, why did you do this? Of course, they went over, do you know if she's taking medication? And, and um, you know, did you see her taking it? And apparently he said, yeah. But I never heard what she was taking, by the way, in, in all of that testimony. Which, if you want to see that, it's in the other video. If you haven't watched... Um, the prosecution putting him on first on day two. Watch it on Long Crime or watch it on my channel or whatever. Just go watch it if you're fascinated with, with the trial. But uh, let's see how this is going to go because I am curious and I haven't seen this yet. I know the trial is over, but I haven't watched it. I've been taking it each step at a time. I did see a thumbnail. The trial is over. I haven't watched any of it. I want to go through the, systematically go through each of the witnesses and see what's going on, right? Because I like trials. And here we go. We heard a lot of testimony on your direct with the prosecutor regarding the garage videos and what was on the garage videos and you transferring the garage videos to a flash drive for the police. Um, did you have an opportunity in, before you were transferring them over to view those garage videos? Uh, yes, the four from that afternoon I had seen, yes. Okay. And we talked a lot about them on direct, but we're going to go ahead and play those for the jury so that everybody... Let, let's practice real quick. Real quick. Okay, we got a little sidebar action here already. Carly sitting there. Guys, I think I she's the a sociopath. This exhibit will be marked as S9. A and narcissistic for sociopath. All This is what we'll do. We'll mark the sleeve, and then Mr. Levingston, as soon as they're finished, we'll get the DVD out. Oh, it's in there. Okay. You may proceed. Does the defense wish to publish this? Yes, Your Honor. No. 
she grab a tissue because she's fixing to cry on demand? I don't know. I'm just asking. Just asking questions here, people. Just wanting to know. Oh, yeah. Now I know why she grabbed a tissue, because they're playing some video. And this is the defense, guys. Cross-examining the stepfather. I'm curious of what's the point of them showing this for the defense. Yeah, I think she's a sociopathic narcissist. If that's a little loud, I'm sorry. I did have to adjust the volume because the court volume was low. So when, obviously, when I upload this, I did adjust it to make it louder so you can hear the testimony. I had to do that in the other video, by the way. Uh, the one on the, uh, the prosecution examining the father the first time. I don't know why the audio was so low. Here's the dad getting home. He has no clue. Jeez. What do y'all think about her friend not just frickin' leaving after she saw her mother dead? That's... that's creepy. Something's wrong with her friend. For Pete's sake. And hung around until her dad got home. Oh my god. It's crazy. Mr. Smiley, is, is that a true and accurate representation of, of what you recall once you got home that afternoon? It's like she's shaking. Yes. Okay. Who was that screaming that we heard on the video? 
It was Carly screaming, and you heard me holler, what's the matter? And, and what about seeing Carly made you ask her what was wrong? I could immediately tell that something was bad wrong with Carly. Uh, just the screaming, her eyes were just huge. She was looked like she was terrified. Have you ever heard Carly scream like that before? No. Have you ever seen Carly look as terrified as she did on March 19th before? No. Would Carly have any reason to run from you? No. Okay. Mr. Smiley, can you describe the full floor plan at your house? Um, I guess it's what you call a split. You know, it's got the uh, kind of on the north end, it's a master bedroom, bath, and closet. Uh, living room and kitchen kind of in the middle. And then on the other end, there's two smaller bedrooms that share a bathroom in between the two. And where was Carly's bedroom? It was on the southeast end of the house. And corner. you mentioned that there was a, what, where Carly's bedroom was, there was also a bathroom in another room? Yes. What did you use that other bedroom for? Uh, a lot of just general storage stuff and had some weights and there's a little treadmill in there. Kind of what uh, we call like a junk room? Yeah, a lot of junk in the closet on a shelf and laying around and and is there a, a hallway that separates the, the kitchen and the living room from that side of the house? Yes. Okay. And where was the indoor camera located? Uh, it was in the corner of the kitchen slash dining room open area. Okay. And is the kitchen, living room area of your house, is that open? Yes. Okay. And let me ask you this. How would you describe your and Ashley's marriage? We got along great. Uh, we, you know, I don't guess we ever really had anything we just disagreed on or anything. And were you still in your honeymoon phase? <laughs> yeah. And just for the record, you can't nod. You have to answer yes or no oh, for the yes. court reporter. Yes, I'm sorry. And what, if anything, had Carly told you about her biological dad, Kevin Gregg, doing drugs? Uh, everyone that I can think of, it sounds like he has either tried or does regularly. And what did Carly tell you about her biological dad doing drugs in her presence? Um, he was constantly doing drugs in front of her. Um, blowing the smoke in her face. Um, turns out that he sat her down and made her drink a entire beer when she was 12. And what if anything had Carly told you about her dad offering her drugs during her visitation periods? Uh, not sure on that, but I think they were, she said they were laying around all over the place throughout his house, and I think he had tried to get her to do some various things at one point or another. And would you say that Carly was scared of her dad? Yes. Uh, she did not like having to go up there and she was not herself for a day or two after coming back. Okay. And would you say that Carly's mom was scared of her dad? Yes. Anytime they spoke of him, it was like a deer in the headlights. They would freeze up and be shaking sometimes if they were talking about him. Do you think this defense is leaning towards Carly's traumatized, her her real father forced her to do drugs, and it's created this mental breakdown 
that she's going to go and murder her mother. So far, it is weak attempt at to try to rationalize a horrible thing Carly did. And how would you describe Carly's relationship with her mom during the time that you came into her life in spring of 2019 to March 19th of 2024? They got along great, loved doing things together. Um, they liked a lot of the same um, movies and uh, they'd go shopping together and uh, they, they stayed together quite a bit. Pretty tight bond? Yes. And is it fair to say that Ashley was protective of Carly because she'd lost a child already? Yes. she wanted the best for Carly and watched over her all the time, yes. And is it fair to say because Ashley was protective of Carly that she was a little on the stricter side with things like social media? She was, yeah. She, you know, would read all the bad things that happened in the news on all that and she didn't care for any of it. And I think TikTok's probably one of the, one of the ones that she didn't care for. And TikTok was what Carly had put on the iPod, the old iPod? Yes, just just watching the usual stupid videos. Yeah, and we've heard the phrase burner phone a few times, but when we're hearing burner phone, are we talking about the old iPod? Yes. Okay, so the burner phone is the old iPod she had that she somehow downloaded social media apps to. Yes. Okay. And... Carly was in 10th grade at the time that you guys found the, the iPod? Yes. With the social media apps? Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you say that most 10th graders want to be on social media? Uh, Were there any other social media apps Carly had on the iPad? I can't remember at this time. Ashley had taking care of all that. She was way more <coughs> tech savvy with that stuff than I am. So is she trying to say that her mother was too strict? That all most kids want to be on social media. So Carly's pissed so she kills her mom because she can't be on social media? Just asking questions here because where is this going? Some of the questions were the same questions the prosecution asked. Had you and Ashley already found the old iPod? Yes, we had. Uh, she had found it and uh, figured out what was going on. Yeah. And when did you guys discover the old iPad that's called the people have been calling the burner phone? I'm just going to say sometime last fall. I don't know the exact time frame. So not in March. No. And. We talked about an incident with Carly looking on her teacher's computer at school. Uh, did Carly need to cheat to get good grades? <laughs> no, she was. She loved school, but she was almost bored with school a lot of days. It was even though she was in the advanced classes, she's a light year ahead of everything they're teaching. Okay. Anything new, she picks up and just wants to be a step ahead of the teachers. And. Hadn't Carly told you about that incident that the kids in her class had dared her to? Yes, they had, yeah, they had, she told us about it. Okay. And how would you describe your relationship with Carly? Uh, all good. We, uh, we've gotten along from the beginning. Uh, hadn't really had any problems between us. Okay. And do you have any other children? No. No problems, but yet she tried to kill you. And would you say that you love Carly the same as you would a biological child? Yes. Okay. And what, if anything, had Ashley told you about her ex-husband's mental health issues? Objection, Your Honor. You're safe. What, if anything, had Carly told you? Objection, Your Honor. You're safe. 
study. Have you ever had any interactions with Mr. Gregg? Uh, no, other than I would see him in the car uh, picking up or dropping Carly off. Uh, and a lot of times he would drop her off and leave, wouldn't even check to see if she was getting in the house. Okay. And you said that the handgun that was used in this incident on March 19th was kept under Ashley's side of the bed? Yes. Was it kept in a lock box or anything like that? No, she just had it under she had the little cubbies and all we had built out for kind of storage. She had set it under there. Okay. And why was she sleeping with a loaded handgun under her side of the bed? She was terrified that the ex was going to show up one day and she wanted that there. Okay. Now, in the time that you've known Carly, the three and a half years from spring of 2019 to March 19th of 2024, had you ever seen Carly be violent? No. Had there ever been any incidents in which Carly was in trouble for being violent? No, not that I know of. Okay. Had you ever seen Carly enraged? No. Had you ever seen Carly get mad? No, she'd get frustrated with something every now and then if she couldn't make something work like she wanted to or something in a video game. Just and she would work at it over and over and over till she figured it out and got it. Okay. Had Carly been having any trouble at school? No. Had she been having any trouble with friends? Not that I know of. Okay. And you mentioned that Carly had had uh, uh, you know, a boyfriend with a uh, at school, and at first Ashley didn't like it, but then she was okay. Yes. Why did Ashley first have a problem with Carly having this boyfriend at school? Uh, just in general, she had told her she didn't want her date until she was sixteen or so, at least, and okay. just trying to watch over her. Okay. And do you recall? a statement that you made to law enforcement uh, back on March 19th about you'd been y'all been having problems with Carly again I don't remember exactly what all uh, I told them at this point okay. what if any issues had you and Ashley been having with Carly uh, just not really any problems with her other than I think she was kind of at times depressed or you know she's a teenage girl maybe emotional but she ended up uh, we got her to a clinic up close to her I guess it's in Madison there to let her talk with a therapist. Okay and what had what had led you and Ashley to decide to put Carly in counseling? Uh, she just didn't seem like she was her normal happy peppy self. She was just kind of depressed and sitting around more and she, uh, you know, she said she thought talking to somebody might help her. Had you noticed any anything else that was going on with Carly that concerned you at that time? Not that I recall. She was kind of having problems with time management kind of stuff and maybe remembering a couple things which is a little unusual for her with schoolwork stuff. Can you tell me about the issues she was having with with remembering things? Oh, uh, just... You know, a lot of this, this, this line of questioning is it's the... He's staying consistent the line of, it's the same questions that the prosecution at least most of them were except they had two struck down uh when she was asking about the dad had he you know because it was going to be hearsay so i'm wondering what they were trying to get in about the real father to try to 
I don't know. I'm going to speculate. Are, are they going for, well, Carly was disturbed. Her her dad did all this stuff to her. Her mother's being strict on her. She's taken some medication, which I still don't know what the medication is, but I'm just speculating. And then leading to Carly shooting her mother? I, I don't know. I'm just trying to piece through of what what kind of line of defense is, is this going with him, which they told us that uh, he is, well, this woman did. She's the one that did the opening statements for the defense by stating that he supports her. So it was making me think, oh, he's going to be testifying for her on her behalf. She has got her tissues ready, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Smiley, can you describe uh, the depth of your injury that you sustained on March 19th? Um, I already heard that. It's just a spot went through my edge of the upper trap muscle right, right there and kind of zipped right through. And like I said, oddly enough, I know it sounds weird, but I've never really felt it or had any trouble with it. Did you require stitches? No. Okay. I think we heard uh, someone, an officer on one of the other cameras call it grazed. Is that a fair description? I guess, yes. Okay. And Mr. Miley, do you have any, do you have any idea why Carly would want to shoot you? No. <clears throat> Well, it wasn't that flag for speculation, but it was, I want to know. We, we all heard Carly screaming when you walked into the garage, from the garage into the kitchen on March 19th. Um, how did Carly appear to you when you walked in? Like I said, she was, she just, my initial thoughts were she was terrified, scared out of her mind. I still, to this day, don't think she ever even recognized me. Oh, uh, something was wrong there. I don't know what, but something was off. I don't know, guys. This is what how he thought. She waited for him to open the door. Y'all heard him in his testimony. When the prosecution had him first, she shot at him as soon as he opened the door. The door wasn't even open that far. She, boom! She's shooting at him. Damn. Now he's thinking that she was just out of her mind. He he probably needs to watch the video of how calculated his stepdaughter was of coming in the home. The mother's in her room. She's creeping around the sides looking goes to the back room grabs the gun hides it behind her back so the camera doesn't see goes and then you hear three shots she immediately comes back <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sets on the stool and proceeds to text him and other people she didn't look out of her mind or like she's saw a demon or she is a de well she is a monster but she seemed pretty sound mind to me in that video it is so damning and i bet the jury seeing seeing all of that now look everybody grieves different and takes tragedy differently but this is blowing my mind this is bizarre in a way I mean, I don't even know how I would react. I, I don't. I'm just speculating. Like, you still think that she didn't know it was you and she's just out of her mind and she's scared to death. She's so scared that she just ran. And when you walked into the house, did Carly say anything to you? No, just was screaming. Did she say anything in response to your question? What's wrong? No. Is that like the Carly that you had known for the past three years? No, not at all. Did Carly ever have any interest in guns? 
No, um, Ashley had wanted her to go shooting with us a time or two, and I had tried to, you know, get her to shoot a couple t different times, and I think Ashley or somebody had might, might have taken pictures the time or two that she went, but that was it, and she never was interested in going when myself and Ashley went. And in all the time that you've known Carly, would you describe her as callous? No. Would you describe her as calculating? No, except with math. Would you describe her as diabolical? No. Did y'all see her laugh? This is no laughing matter. She la Oh, is she just calculating in math? And she's like, yep, I am. She certainly was calculating on that video. Thank God for the video. Because if there was no video, and then he's saying all of this, I, d d this my trial would be totally different. It would be totally different. Because we wouldn't have the visual of her creeping around. Like I said before, y'all saw the video. It's like she she just knew what she was doing. Creeping around, hiding the gun, calling her friends, calling him, getting her friend over, tell her friend to wait outside. She's going to shoot him. Oh, for Pete's sake. How would you describe Carly? She's just a sweet little girl ever since I've known her. <coughs> and, you know, even when we take her to the playground, instead of running around playing, <coughs> a lot of times she would be pushing other kids on the swing and the little, I don't know what they're called, little roundabout things that kids get on and go in a circle. She'd be the one that'd be pushing groups of kids rather than her playing. She'd go find the younger ones to try to help take care of them and she just sweet. And are you aware of any medication Carly had been placed on? She and I can't remember the names of which one was which. She had been placed on one by the therapist that they had started her on something. And do you recall what that medication was for? Whatever they thought it was, whether it was, I don't know, just generalized stress or depression or I don't know what they were thinking it was. Okay. And do you recall how many medications that she'd been on? I know she was on one and then approximately the week before the 19th, they swapped her to another one. Okay. I guess the defense could pull up stats. Yeah, let's see some stats on this medication given to adolescents and adults. What happens to them? Especially if you switch their medicine. Now look, I'm not pro-Carly. Don't misunderstand. I'm just saying, what can the defense do? All right. Cause she's clearly guilty. She's clearly a psychopath, narcissist. <laughs> clearly. But, I mean, they could bring up some stats. Well, these are the stats. Did they take this medicine for this amount of time? This is what happens to them. This is uh, the outcome of reports of parents saying da-da-da for their adolescents. What are, what are adults reporting? Are they having suicidal thoughts? I mean, we've all heard those stories, but I, I think uh, I would be curious. I would be curious. What was she taking? How long was she taking it before they changed her medicine? And could this have an effect on her brain? It's a possibility. She's still guilty. Okay, I'm just saying. Just, just throwing that out there. And... With the first medication that Carly was on, did you notice any changes in her personality or demeanor? No. I knew that was and coming. With the second medication that Carly was on, did you notice any changes in her personality or demeanor? Oh, uh, no. Uh, she had only had a chance to be on it for a handful of days. I don't know exactly how many days, but uh, if she was just getting started on it. <clears throat> 
Do you and Carly still have a relationship? Yes, I think we're good. Okay. And how frequently do you and Carly talk? Um, just about every day now. Um, I don't always get off of work in time to catch her on a phone call, but we text some back and forth over the app that's allowed, and we uh, talk over the video chat thing that's allowed through the jail and on uh, weekends. So we're, we're, we're good. Prior to March 19th, had you ever been afraid of Carly? No. Are you afraid of Carly today? No. You should be. She shot your wife in the face three times. This is bizarre. I don't know. It's not like I've covered a lot of cases. I, I have a, a handful of cases I've covered on videos here and cases I've just watched in general throughout the years of my life because I am old. And uh, this is weird. I don't know. What are the stats of uh, how many parents just stick by their kid? But you, you're you not afraid of them? You should be. It's okay. Have a relationship with her. I guess that's fine. For, obviously, forgive her. But you could never trust her. Ever. Never. Ever. Again. I, I don't know. This is weird. Prior to March 19th, had Ashley ever been afraid of Carly? Based on your under cause for speculation. Sustained. Based on your observations and personal knowledge, had Ashley ever appeared to be afraid of Carly? Objection, Your Honor, again, calls for speculation. Your Honor, he can say what he observed. Y'all argue in front of the jury. Y'all approach. What? They're trying to bring in that. Why would the d defense ask him that? Okay, I'm trying to figure this out. It was Ashley ever afraid of Carly? Why couldn't he answer that? Well, if she was, so. All right, the objection is going to be uh, overruled. You can answer the question based on your observation and personal knowledge. Did Ashley appear to be afraid of Carly? No, not at all. And you testified on direct that you had retained your own attorney after the investigation of this matter got started. Um, and you said that that was because you, you had been concerned or felt worried that you were going to be charged with a crime? Yes, the cops had insinuated the tampering with evidence. Um, they held my license for several days, wouldn't bring it back. Um, I kind of think it now that they were maybe trying to keep me Objection. around. Objection. Calls for speculation. I you, you can testify to what you observe, but you can't testify to what you think other people were doing, okay? Okay. All right. There had been some people in the chat. I've read some of this chat bleeding through that maybe they were in it together I don't think so I don't think so well, I said in the other video I, I don't even think the best actors could have done what he did on that call it it was heart wrenching and real to the bone to the core and then the, the body cam footage of him just you know screaming she's killed her mother her mother's in there on the floor But I guess the point I want to make is if I think Carly would have already folded if they were in cahoots, people. I'm just saying. Of course, the people in that chat cannot hear me unless they are curious about everybody doing coverage and eating up any coverage they can find to say, I think Carly would have folded. She would have come. She would have said it. She's just a kid. She would have said, "Yeah, we're in it together." But that, I don't. That's not what's happening. At least I don't think. I don't believe that. And and I went and got a lawyer from from there. Okay. And 
And why would you have tried to hide evidence that you were telling law enforcement about? I have no idea. I'm, I was trying to find anything I could that might help out and figure out what, what or why. Was law enforcement aware that there was a garage camera on March 19th? I don't believe so. They were all around out there apparently looking at stuff. I don't know, five or six of them and they never saw the camera or never bothered to mess with it more than likely. Had any members of law enforcement asked you about any cameras? No, not that I recall. Okay. And you spoke on direct examination about them turning the house back over to you. About how long did law enforcement have your house under investigation on March 19th? Um, I had been down to the ER and back a couple hours, two and a half hours roughly maybe because it had gotten dark by the time I got back there. And how many times after March 19th mm. did law enforcement issue search warrants to come back out? Um, two more times. Okay. And during those two other times, now making three times that law enforcement investigated your house, did anyone find the camera in the fridge? Uh, no, they did not. Okay. And they didn't ask about any cameras in the garage? No. Okay. No. So you were very forthcoming with this evidence? Yes. Okay. And you also had your attorney file a motion to rescind the no contact order between you and Carly, correct? Yes. yes. Had you asked that that be done beforehand? Uh, yes, I had tried to get my first attorney to get some of that in motion uh, and it, I don't know what happened there, it kind of fell through. And has anyone else made you feel intimidated during the course of this investigation? Um, I was told by the DA's office that I couldn't contact anyone else. Uh, like y'all that were working with her about anything, couldn't speak with anyone else, and then you were told you. Sure. Oh snap! You can't talk to nobody but the prosecution. Well, he's talking to the murderer. They let him talk to her on video, on texting. Why does a murderer get to do these things? Why would he have to show up and talk to her on a phone that they're recording the conversation, but no, they're going to give her electronic devices that she can text him and video chat with him? I think your tax dollars, I don't know if the tax dollars are paying for this. I am curious because I don't know. Why is this happening? Just asking questions here. They're like, no. Now, I think it's looking bad for the prosecution, them objecting this line of questioning, because uh, we want to know. He's under oath. He's going to be telling so, the truth. It's understandable that you would be a little guarded. Yes. And that this has been a long, ongoing investigation, and it, it's hard to talk about this stuff emotionally. Yes, at times. Worse than others. Yeah. And that you have been interviewed about this previously. Yes. So, you're having to go back over the same stuff repeatedly. Yes. And it's a... And, and, it's hard to testify. It's nerve-wracking. It is. And this is being televised and broadcast, and there's been a lot of scrutiny, so it's understandable that you would be guarded and nervous while testifying. Yeah. Correct. Thank you for the court's indulgence. Who's interviewing? Redirect examination.
Okay, here comes the prosecution to redirect. Keith, how many phones did you know of that Carly had? I just knew of the one that we had gotten for her. And so if law enforcement uh, had two phones they recovered belonging to Carly from the scene, that would in fact be more phones than you knew about, right? Yes. Do you think that if someone shoots at me unprovoked, that that's a violent offense? Uh, I guess so. It really depends on the circumstances. Again, unprovoked. I'm walking into this courtroom, and out of nowhere, this gentleman closest to the door, as soon as I open it, pulls out a gun and fires it at me. Is that a violent offense? Uh, it could be. It depends on the circumstances. You said that Carly, you never saw her get mad or yell? I have never seen Carly just angry or anything. Never? No ma'am. She's always been just a happy little girl. Was she a happy little girl when we just heard the video when she was firing a gun at you? Oh shit. Uh, like I said, I have never I've never seen anybody like that, even in movies. She was not herself, and like I said, I do not believe she even recognized me. She was wow. terrified. Wow. And if I believe on direct, uh, when I asked you about uh, medications, you actually didn't handle Carly's prescriptions or medications, right? No, Ashley was making sure she was taking them. Wow. <clears throat> I want to talk to you, uh, Mr. Smiley. You said that um, law enforcement came over a couple times and they didn't find these cameras. Um, did Miss Todd and Mr. Camp come over to your house at some point? Yes, they did. And when was that? I think it was after the second police search. Um, and at any point, did they also conduct a search of your house? They came through and wanted to take pictures and get the layout of the house. Uh, did they take anything from the house? I think they took a couple pieces of her artwork and a couple things like that, but I'm not certain at this time. And you don't know as to what uh, they did with those, do you? I do not. Um, did they ever find the camera in the refrigerator? No. Court's indulgence. This is just no, no, strange. No, no, no. May this witness be finally excused by the state. Uh, we'd ask that he be subject to recall. All right. Mr. Schmeling will ask you to stand down, huh? but you're going to need to leave the courtroom and not discuss your testimony with anybody. You're not free to, uh, you're not free to be in the courtroom just yet. Okay. okay. All right. And he can't be talking to Carly. I mean, wow. What a bizarre witness. The stepfather who was there, who she shot. He goes and finds his wife's body in Carly's room. Wow. And the line of questioning from the defense. So this is where I think they were trying to raise doubt for the prosecution and for law enforcement in her opening arguments is that uh, it, uh, the police, it's not always what it seems. So they were trying to squeeze out, this is what I'm gathering, I don't know, could be wrong. Okay, well, the cops were looking at you. You were trying to do something to the evidence, which could happen. If he was complicit with her in killing his wife, he gets a superficial wound. But I don't. I'm not. I'm not buying it. That that that's what happened. I mean, or he is the best actor on the planet, which I doubt. 
so that that's not that's not a possibility obviously and what they're wanting to uh say well the cops uh accused you of of sabotaging the 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 cameras the prosecution objecting to the line of questioning that he wasn't supposed to talk to nobody they told him not to talk to anybody and then, then they, they said, yeah, he can answer it. And then he says, no. <laughs> I mean, what? This was just weird. I don't know about this, guys. Just let me know what you think in the comments. But I just thought it was, he seems odd. Again, I know everybody. This was very traumatic. I can't imagine. But he, he just seems like an odd, an odd guy. Very calm, very passive. His wife handled it. I mean, it's his stepdaughter. I don't blame him for not wanting, not, not, no, not, not wanting, but just not knowing what medication she's taking. I mean, the guy works every day. He comes home. He's tired. It, it, his wife is dealing with the with the girl. Yeah, did they go off and do things as a family? Yeah, it sounds like it. She was just a happy kid, and he just smiles at her, and she just smiles back. It was bizarre. She smiles. The mom is gone. There is no jovialness about this whatsoever. That blame. And I know a year has passed since the incident, but this is serious. They're in the courtroom. This is serious stuff. I don't know, man. Let's just keep... We're going to keep going back to that vi that that video. That video of her, her coming in, sneak, watched her turn that left corner, went down the hallway, goes and gets the gun, comes back. She's peeking around. She goes, but comes in the dining, comes in the kitchen area, hiding it behind her back, knowing the camera's there. And then goes and shoot, shoots her mom. But what's crazy is that she knows the camera's there. Let, let's do a little forethought. But obviously she's on teenage brain. She only lives in the moment. But why didn't she... She was aware of the camera. Because she's hiding the gun behind her back. Why didn't she just get rid of the camera? The camera has audio on it too. Obviously, we heard the gunshots. Why didn't she get rid of the camera? I just have some questions. I mean, cause, I mean, obviously, she she's she's an idiot. She's a sociopath. She wasn't thinking, but she was thinking to hide the gun. It was so weird. It was just strange. I don't know, guys. Um, well, there you have it. Um, there's still more left of day two, but we're going to continue, we're going to continue that. But right now, <clears throat> I think that's enough of, uh, wrapping up the stepfather's testimony.